I want to show you guys how I do my mermaid tattoo tumblers and how I paint her tail um, and how I essentially make this guy because I have to make another one so I figured I'd show you guys. Um, very little glitter is used in this. I only use a little bit of a chunky to sprinkle on the back. Um, I'm going to use Cinderella Story by Glitter Mamaco. But a lot of this is done with mica powders and alcohol inks. So um, I'm going to, so the, I'm going to essentially just now prep a cup and spray paint it white, and then um, we'll go from there. So my cup has been prepped and painted white, and now I'm going to add some pearl mica powder to my epoxy that I've already mixed up. This mica powder came from the soap making department at Hobby Lobby. Any pearl white mica powder will work. Um, and that's pre-mixed epoxy. I'm just going to add it to it and then mix it really, really well. After I've mixed it really well and I know that there's no more powder clumps, I'm going to put it on my cup and I'm going to put a generous amount on my cup. I want to make sure that my cup um, has no bald spots or any spots where the epoxy um, looks odd or like it doesn't, uh, it doesn't have like a nice, um, full coat on it because the pearl powder is going to give it a nice iridescence background for our temporary tattoo. So as I go and I make sure that I have a nice coat and that it's nice and even, um, I make sure I get the bottom really well as well and I hit it with my heat gun to help level it all out um, and then I'm going to go through with a gloved finger and any places that it doesn't look quite right, I'm going to smooth it um, and then 15 minutes later I'll torch out bubbles. All right, so our tumbler is dry. Um, this is just with the um, pearlized white mica. There's no glitter on it. Um, we're going to take a temporary tattoo of a mermaid and put it on the tumbler. Um, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna trim this tattoo just a hair. Uh, excuse my giant arm. So I wanna put it on my tumbler. I'm actually gonna pick up part of the tumbler. I'm not crazy about like where um, it just doesn't look 100% smooth. I want to make sure my entire tail goes on pretty well. So I'm kind of like measuring it out on my tumbler. Um, and I'm just going to kind of trim out my tattoo a little bit here. Because these guys are a really nice size. So. And it's better to trim it now than before you wet it. And I kind of just. I'm gonna take it and take the plastic off. Okay. I find it's easier to apply them when you trim them up. So they don't you just kind of know more what you're working with. I'm just gonna kind of look at it, put it where I want it, so to speak. The top has to be cut off just a hair. Okay, so the best way to do this, I put it on my tumbler. I push down in the center, I rub. It's a slightly sticky already just because of the fact that like the paper is. And I just rub it down and I smooth it. And when you trim them, it is a lot easier to get them smooth. So um, I learned that just because I do a lot of these guys. I love tattoos, temporary tattoos on tumblers. And then I take a washcloth or a piece of paper towel and I wet it and I just push down and I've already smoothed it. So it's a lot easier to like rub the air bubbles out and all that stuff once you've already smoothed it down. There's one right there, but I'm gonna keep smoothing. I actually prefer these over water slides. I don't know why, I just think they're I don't know. I don't know if I think they're more fun, if I just think that they're easier. They're a lot more forgiving, that is for sure. I'm just going to kind of keep pushing down on my paper. And you see where the paper is starting to lift? The tattoo is stuck in those spots. So I push down on my corners really well so I can get my paper up. 
just test here. Ooh. And there she is. And then what I'm gonna do is, there's a piece of tattoo paper, make sure this is nice and wet, and I'm just gonna slightly go over it and just kind of push, make sure there's no air bubbles, um, and just slightly go over it. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually let this dry and then we'll apply the alcohol inks. So I'm gonna let this sit and dry um, and I'm just gonna come back to it probably when I have time. So it's probably gonna be at least an hour. Um, but you'll know when it's dry. You can just feel it and tell. So I'm just gonna let this bad boy just sit here and dry. All right, so I'm gonna paint the tail. You may hear Willow because there's no epoxy going, so she's hanging out with me right now. Um, <clears throat> to paint the tail, I'm using makeup sponges, excuse my blue hand, and alcohol inks. And I just grabbed a few different like mermaidy feeling colors to me. And then there's these really awesome alcohol inks that I get from um, Glitter Fetish, and they're called Alchemy Inks. And she actually just came out with some new ones. Um, and they give like a shimmer. And they're really pretty when you put them in epoxy. They're really cool when you put them on black. I'm gonna put these on, and then I'm gonna probably, I'm gonna just select one and put that on top, and you'll see the shimmer. Um, I am going to start with to Purple Twilight by Tim Holtz. And I cut my little, um, Makeup sponge is pretty small because I want to make sure that I have like really good control over my alcohol ink and where it goes. So I'm going to put some on here and let me take the middle of this thing out of here so that the thing that I was on the turner with so that I can put my arm in. Okay. So I literally just go only on the tail, like nowhere else. And I just dab it on my tail. Yeah, glasses. Someone's got glasses. And I really love the fact that my husband took like my films. It's super fun. I'm just gonna keep dabbing and I wanna just make sure I don't get it on her. Um, normally I actually usually put like a layer of epoxy on, um, the tattoo, but I didn't this time. So I definitely want to make sure I'm careful because I don't want to rub my tattoo off if I get ink where I don't want it. Whoops. All right. I'm going to continue. I really wish that my husband hadn't taken my phone. So I'm going to continue up here. My purple. Just being really careful to only get it on the tail. little bit off the tail but that's okay. I'm gonna switch now to like the bluer tealer kind of color. Put that on here. I'm gonna start actually putting it right below the purple because I wanna I'm gonna put some on the purple kind of like ombre it but I want to put it here first before it gets all muddy from the purple. I'm gonna put it down here and then I'm gonna put some up here. Kind of just when you put the blue, the teal, and the purple, it kind of gives it like more of like a blue um, look versus the teal. I want to go with this more green one. Just use this one again. on the rest of her tail. My baby! You have a baby? How cool! And my baby! Oh, your sister took it? Okay, I'll get it for you. Hold on. Okay. Okay. So now that that's all on there, actually I want to put a little bit of pinky kind of color, I think, for the purple is. So 
So the alchemy inks are what cause the magic. So I'll show you. So now that that's all on there. I'm gonna go with, I'm gonna go with Hydra. Let's go with Pegasus. Shake them up. They have like, um, these come with no alcohol in them. You add your own alcohol. They have like a crazy iridescent -y kind of like almost like ridiculously fine glitter in them. I don't know exactly what it is. Karen from Glitter Fetish, the owner would be able to like tell you more. But if you put it, as you put it on, if you see, it's like very, very iridescent. I have a chunk there, which I'll get with some alcohol. And I use these a lot. I love them. I think they're really cool. Um, I put them in all different kinds of things. And she just came out with new ones, which I have to order. You see how now all of a sudden it's shimmery? And I just realized I actually have nothing on the other end of her tail. So let me fix that. In here. Now I'll put more on this. Too crazy. Oh, so I dropped something on my foot. See now her shell's all shimmery. I'm gonna switch it up though, because I'm going to like the blues and the greens. So now you see it's like all shimmery, super pretty. I am gonna take one clean one, put some alcohol on it, and this is just gonna kind of help blend because the alchemy inks do have a powder in them, so sometimes they can get a little chunky. So it's just gonna help kind of blend that a little bit better and dissipate that powder a little. Places where it kind of got a little chunky, just kind of spread it. And then any place that I got where I don't want it, I'm gonna clean off with a Q-tip. Whoops. So I put a little alcohol on the tip of a Q-tip. I'm just gonna make sure that like, I clean up where I don't want any of this, like a little bit on her arm. And then now that I have a dirty Q-tip, I'm gonna take a little bit of this, like legit, just put a little bit on my Q-tip and a little bit of whatever color I want. I think I'm gonna do this one. And I'm gonna put a little bit in that starfish very carefully. Now she's all pretty. And like, I can actually go in if I wanted to like deepen it or whatever, you can always go in and put more in. Um, it's all like personal preference. Oh, my girls are fighting over something stupid. I'm sure like a doll. And you can always just take the one you sprayed with alcohol and kind of just blend. Now you have a painted mermaid. So I'll let this dry. Um, when I have the ability to epoxy, I'll come back and do the epoxy and show you how I do the rest of it. 
So I've mixed up some epoxy and now I'm going to make the coloring for um, the, the back um, of the, like the water looking part of the back. Um, I have some mica powders that I have pulled out and um, I also have my chunky glitter ready for me to put that on as well. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put some of the epoxy in some extra cups and then I'm going to add mica powders and mix them together for whatever colors I want. And I decided I wanted to do on the back of this one a purple and like a bluish teal. So I ended up using um, a purple mica powder from Glitter Mama Co. and I ended up mixing emerald and um, a blue, I'll have to double check the name, mica powder from Glitter Mama Co. for my teal color. So I just kind of tap them in and then I mix them up to see what color um, I want to see like the depth of the color that I want. I don't want them too, too dark. I want them to be kind of light, um, mainly because the tail is not super dark and I want it to, to be um, similar in color. So right now I'm mixing my purple and I'm just taking a look and trying to see what color I want it to be. When you mix micas, if you um, take the mica powder mixture with your epoxy and you kind of rub it up the side of your cup, you're going to see how um, translucent it is because it's going to look darker in the cup than it looks once you put it on your actual tumbler because there's more of it in the cup. So once you go and thin it out on your tumbler, it's going to look lighter. So sometimes it's a little bit nicer to see and make sure that um, it's as dark as you want it to be. Now that I have the purple tone that I want, now it's time for me to mix up my teal. Um, and I am going to use this blue and the emerald from Glitter Mama Co. And I'm going to mix those into epoxy and get until I get the color that I want for my tealish color. And the emerald looks very, very green in the container, but it's actually more like an emerald color. Um, I actually really like this one. I've used it for lots of different molds and things like that. It's a very beautiful green when you put it in epoxy. Now I'm grabbing my blue and I'm going to put that in my epoxy um, to make it more of a teal versus just a green. Um, I love mixing mica powders together to get a unique color. They just, they mix really well and it's really cool how you can come up with something completely custom by mixing different micas. Um, I'm gonna add a little bit more green because I wanna make sure that it's not too, too blue and that blue is very dark so that I can get a proper um, teal kind of color to match the tail. Now that I have my micas mixed, I'm going to add luster dust to my epoxy. Um, it's a very, very fine like additive, like a glitter, and it just gives a nice little shimmer uh, without it being overly glitterly. And actually, you can add more or less of this to your epoxy and give um, your cup you know, more of like a shimmer or a glitter look, just depending on how much you add. It's one of my favorites. I probably have like four of those jars because I go through a lot of it and I have it everywhere and I put it in all different kinds of stuff. Um, so this is going to be my, my base coat of epoxy. I'm mixing the luster dust in it to give it a nice little shimmer with, you know, out being overbearing like a glitter would be if you added like an opal glitter. Now that everything's mixed, I'm going to first start by applying the epoxy that just has the luster dust in it. So it's essentially going to be my base coat of epoxy. Um, and this is going to be what helps the mica mixture move around on the cup. So I put um, not a ton, I put like a normal amount of epoxy on there and I'm going to just put on and it's going to give a shimmer to where the mermaid is and a shimmer through the whole cup without it being glittery, but I'm going to put a full coat on the entire cup and make sure that it's completely coated and level. I apply heat just to help level out the epoxy and get ready for my micas.
Now I'm going to apply the micas, and what I do is I just string them through the cup um, in different spots where I feel like I want them, mainly on the back where there is no mermaid. And I'm gonna do my lighter color first, which is the purple. And as my cup turner turns, I'm just gonna look for spots that I wanna put it, and then I'm just gonna put it down. And um, just don't overdo it, and don't do huge thick lumps, or else it's just gonna start to spin with your cup. After they're on, I take my finger and I use my finger to just kind of smudge them and uh, blend them a little bit into the first layer that we did. Sometimes I'll tip my finger into the mica if I feel like it needs to be a little bit thicker. Um, this is more or less an aesthetic thing, whatever you prefer. I um, do a little bit, then I'll go back and do more as I do my cup, just depending on how I think it looks. I don't ever want to do too much in the beginning because it's a heck of a lot easier to put more on than it is to take off too much. So then I'll do, I do my light color and then I'll do my dark color and I'll keep doing them until I get the desired look that I want. Now to add the chunky glitter, all I do is I pour it out into my gloved hand because um, it tends to stick less to my gloved hand than my regular hand. And then I will go and just sprinkle it sporadically wherever I want it. Um, it gives it a cool little effect. It almost looks like bubbles in the water. And I just kind of do it usually going the same direction as my micas. Um, and I just sprinkle very sparingly and add same kind of thing. As I go, if I need to put more, I will, but I start off doing it very sparingly so that I don't have to try to get glitter off that I don't want on there. So now I'm just gonna let it spin and cure and then I will put two coats of epoxy on this afterwards um, so it's nice and smooth. If you were gonna add a name, I would do it after this, you know, the first coat as long as you make sure it's you know, nice and smooth and then it's done.